Hello friends, welcome back to our video lesson planning on circulatory system. In video 1, we have seen the interesting activities on the topic beating of the heart, anatomy of the heart and also the components of blood. In part 2 video, I will be talking about the few activities which will help the children to understand better on concepts like the blood vessels, types of blood vessels, functions of blood vessels and also pumping of the heart. Blood is transported through blood vessels. Teaching students the characteristics of arteries, veins and capillaries using analogy is a good idea. A tube with a thicker wall in proportion to its lumen and higher elasticity can represent an artery, while a tube with a thinner wall and less elasticity can represent a vein. A thin tube with a small diameter can show a capillary. Please note that these tubes only represent the comparative wall thickness of the three types of blood vessels. I followed it up with few probing questions to know whether the students have understood the concepts better or not. So after this, students were curious to know about the working of the blood vessels and probably at this point we can introduce the concept of blood pressure and what keeps the blood moving could also be explained to them. For this, I conducted a simple activity. For this, we need a container of colored water, a big syringe with a plunger, a thin elastic tube and a binder clip. Fill the syringe with colored water and secure the thin elastic tube over its tip. Attach a binder clip to the elastic tube to seal it from the other end. Gently push and release the plunger of the syringe to force the colored water into the elastic tube. The movement of colored water caused by pushing the plunger stimulates blood flow and blood pressure generated due to pumping of the heart. How does my heart pump blood? This is a basic question students often ask me and I used to teach them orally about the pumping of the heart. But then using a model and explaining the pumping process of the heart not only helps them to understand the concept better but also helps to retain this complex system for a longer duration. This model represents heart's chambers and its interaction with the lungs in an intuitive manner. This model may seem complex but then once done, it will explain the process very easily and this could be considered as a mini project. I made a model using plastic containers of small, medium and large size, transparent tubes, two with controller, two long tubes of same length and two comparatively narrower tubes of same length, four balloons, two clamps, blue and red colored water and scissors. I first drew the circulatory system on a paper. Then fill one of the large containers with blue colored water to represent deoxygenated blood in the vena cava and keep the other empty as iota. Fill one container with red colored water and keep it near the lungs to represent oxygenated blood. Keep the other container empty like this. I took four red balloons and cut the open end of each and made two small holes. Use the balloons to represent the chambers of the heart and make connections between the balloon to the containers. Take time while doing this. Then we just have to connect the transparent tube from the container having blue water to write auricle by inserting the tubes into holes on the balloons. Connect the right atrium to right ventricle with a transparent tube with a controller. Make the connection from right ventricle to empty container kept in the lungs. Press this as this will represent the pumping of the deoxygenated blood from the vena cava to the right auricle, right ventricle and lungs. Similarly, connect the lungs to the left atrium and left atrium to left ventricle and then to aorta. Show pumping of blood from lungs to left atrium to the left ventricle and then to iota by pressing against the balloon. See, this is how the oxygenated blood and the deoxygenated blood circulates in the system. This whole activity has helped the students to understand the pumping of the heart in a better manner. To ensure that whether they understood the concept better or not, we can assess the students by posing few questions like what keeps the oxygenated blood and the deoxygenated blood separate? So, dear teachers, after each and every activity, I made it sure that I post questions to students to ensure that they have understood the concept better and also don't forget to repeat the concepts again and again. I never start the class by opening the textbook. I try to discuss the things which are there around us. 
then relate to the topic and then correlate with the content in the textbook. So dear teachers, this is the way we can explain the functioning of the heart to students and as well make them realize that this is one of the important organs in our body which keeps us alive. Activity-based teaching and activity-based learning really go hand in hand. So I would recommend you to teach this at least once. And I'm sure you wouldn't be disappointed. To find the details of each activity, you can please follow the link given in the description box. And please don't forget to share your experience of teaching with activities.